May 12th, Daily Video Bible Reading from the Net Bible, Acts chapter 22 from the New Testament. Brothers and fathers, listen to my defense that I now make to you. When they heard that he was addressing them in Aramaic, they became even quieter. Then Paul said, I am a Jew born in Tarsus in Cilicia, but brought up in the city, educated with strictness under Gamaliel, according to the law of our ancestors, and was zealous for God just as all of you are today. I persecuted this way, even to the point of death, tying up both men and women and putting them in prison, as both the high priest and the whole council of elders can testify about me. From them, I also received letters to the brothers in Damascus, and I was on my way to make arrests there and bring the prisoners to Jerusalem to be punished. As I was en route near Damascus, about noon, a very bright light from heaven suddenly flashed around me. Then I fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to me, Saul, Saul, why are you persecuting me? I answered, Who are you, Lord? He said to me, I am Jesus, the Nazarene, whom you are persecuting. Those who were with me saw the light but did not understand the voice of the one who was speaking to me. So I asked, What should I do, Lord? The Lord said to me, Get up and go to Damascus. There you will be told about everything that you have been designated to do. Since I could not see because of the brilliance of that light, I came to Damascus led by the hand of those who were with me. A man named Ananias, a devout man according to the law, well spoken of by all the Jews who lived there, came to me and stood beside me and said to me, Brother Saul, regain your sight. And at that very moment I looked up and saw him. Then he said, The God of our ancestors has already chosen you to know his will, to see the righteous one and to hear a command from his mouth, because you will be his witness to all people of what you have seen and heard. And now what are you waiting for? Get up, be baptized, and have your sins washed away, calling on his name. When I returned to Jerusalem and was praying in the temple, I fell into a trance and saw the Lord saying to me, Hurry and get out of Jerusalem quickly, because they will not accept your testimony about me. I replied, Lord, they themselves know that I imprisoned and beat those in the various synagogues who believed in you. And when the blood of your witness Stephen was shed, I myself was standing nearby, approving and guarding the cloaks of those who were killing him. Then he said to me, Go, because I will send you far away to the Gentiles. The crowd was listening to him until he said this. Then they raised their voices and shouted, Away with this man from the earth, for he should not be allowed to live. While they were screaming and throwing off their cloaks and tossing dust in the air, the commanding officer ordered Paul to be brought back into the barracks. He told them to interrogate Paul by beating him with a lash so that he could find out the reason the crowd was shouting at Paul in this way. When they had stretched him out for the lash, Paul said to the centurion standing nearby, Is it legal for you to lash a man who is a Roman citizen without a proper trial? When the centurion heard this, he went to the commanding officer and reported it, saying, What are you about to do? For this man is a Roman citizen. So the commanding officer came and asked Paul, Tell me, are you a Roman citizen? He replied, Yes. The commanding officer answered, I acquired this citizenship with a large sum of money, but I was even born a citizen, Paul replied. Then those who were about to interrogate him stayed away from him, and the commanding officer was frightened when he realized that Paul was a Roman citizen and that he had him tied up. The next day, because the commanding officer wanted to know the true reason Paul was being accused by the Jews, he released him and ordered the chief priest and the whole council to assemble. He then brought Paul down and had him stand before them. God, one of my favorite things about doing DVB and reading out loud your incredible, powerful, multi-layered word is up until now I, I have read your word, but silently, of course, in my head, 
or I'll go to Bible studies and we'll talk about the answers. Uh, and sometimes you'll read Bible verses out loud, but not not to this level. I've never done it to this level out loud. But what I love is these things that just come flying in and, and attach themselves to my heart. Things that I had never seen before, I'd read before, but never seen quite in that way before. I, I know that Paul is addressing the crowd and the reason it's going to be stayed is because he's a Roman citizen. And But I thought it was so fascinating when the commanding officer tells Paul, um, I acquired the citizenship with a large sum of money. And Paul says, but I was even born a citizen. And I think how amazing that is because we are born into, we are adopted into your family, God. We cannot, with our words, with our deeds, with no amount of money, no matter how large, can we buy our way into the family of God. Paul was born into the family. I am honored and blessed that I was born into the family. So many people out there have been born into and adopted into your family. It is only through your grace. It is only through your grace that we receive that adoption. It is amazing to me. There's not a single thing in this entire world that I can do to acquire. I can't be a good person and go to heaven. I can't take care of other people and go to heaven. I can't become wealthy and pay somebody so I can go to heaven. There's nothing I can do. Your son, Jesus Christ, has already done it all. I was born a citizen of yours. How crazy awesome is that? Thank you. Thank you, God, for your grace and mercy that you would want us to be part of your family, that you allow us to be part of your family. And probably more exciting than anything is that you love and want us to be part of your family. Thank you, God. Thank you for Paul, who was born into this family, as well as everyone else who has lived in the past, who is currently living and who will live in the future. Thank you for signing my adoption papers, God. In your son's name I pray. Amen.